So I don't know how much of this you're going to hear, but we're going to go in the in Flanders Field Museum. Covered in scaffolding at the moment, the, the cloth all, but... That's what they went to war on. The battalion cyclist. Hmm, OK. Oh. <laughs> In a minute. Oh. This is complicated, isn't it? Make a choice. Make a choice. Alright. Oh wow, okay. So you can follow different people. Russell's, uh, where are we? You want to follow somebody from England, don't you? Do I? Okay. Someone from. Somewhere from. Oh. Someone from Crosby, there you are. West Lancashire. See that one? Okay. No, oh, that's good. Okay. Oh, that's that. clever, isn't it? Yeah. And it's talking about the Triple Alliance. for king and country, even king kids games. What they say, wooden drum for drawing lots, and Belgian army lot. Tea tray. <laughs> yeah, that's where we were the other week. Chemin de Dame. We we'll see the front line here. So, we're done in the bottom there. Okay. Schumann Sausons. And up here, oh, Albert. There is Lens. And over here, Deeper. Blundell Sands. So, we're near where my sister lives. Merton went to Merchant Taylor's. Mm. Okay. And she's <laughs> just down the road. Oh, he went, and so he was at Sandhurst as well. British artillery began firing at 1.30 a.m. on 16th of June. Two hours later, Charles blew his whistle and they went over the top. <laughs> Let's go at the next kiosk, how things went on. Hill 60. So, Ypres there. On the salient. Zonnebeck, out, out there. Oh, the uniforms here. French armour was mainly conscripts, supplemented by professional soldiers. Uh, arriving in 1914, British soldiers. And kilts. Yeah. Huh. The British was a small professional army and it was increased by the territorials in 1915 and about one million volunteers from Kitchener's army. In 1916, compulsory military service was introduced for the UK.
Here. Yeah, the buckles, they yeah, from belts, and they? Fucking belt buckles and, mm. and bits of shells and detonators and spades. Yeah, and the big killers was the artillery, which was responsible for two thirds of all the deaths on the battlefield. And well, the big killer was the bullet often machine guns, other weapons such as toxic gases, bayonets and other pointed and blunt weapons hardly made any difference in the fatality statistics, but they did for the wounded and permanent injuries. Artillery killed two thirds of the casualties. Uh, ambulances. Dressings. Uh, talking about the Red Cross Hospital in, Le in Dipan. Okay, some 36,000 wounded, including civilians, were nursed in this huge complex in the First World War. And workshops for the manufacture of surgical instruments, artificial limbs were also installed here. Yeah. So they've been gassed to provide oxygen. <laughs> Jacket and trousers of a Belgian prisoner of war. Originally prisoners of war wore their own uniform, but after a short time they were given uniforms, so they were easy to recognize. Huh. It's like a mandolin or violin. Oh, Exhibition about the uh, excavations here. Two hundred and thirty one steps. Okay. All right, here we go then. Well, some of the clock mechanism, if I understand it correctly. Carillion rotating drums fitted with pins. Obviously you could choose what tune you would play by fitting different pins. Originally had iron pins. Drum was quick, rotated every quarter of an hour. A system of wires. Uh, so wires. Well, they have the hammers to strike a series of bells. Hmm. Oh, I've got to go up there. Oh. So this is a clavia. A 36 bell carillion in 1963 was moved from the campanile to the carillion room lower down in the tower. Carillion was extended to 49 bells, the usual number for a large instrument. A new keyboard was installed and continued to be used until its restoration in 12, 2012. So you could pay it using keys. Using these keys. Bells.
the bells. The bells. <laughs> Here. Whoa. There we go. Oh my. Yeah. My giddy aunt, as they say. Yeah. Wow. the market square and Menham Gate over there campsites over there somewhere it does tell you on here but I don't know where various things are sure. yeah that's the restaurant oh, that's we the other side of the... no there's the the Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's, oh, it's the other side. Yeah, probably, beg your pardon. We probably will see it when we, were we, over, we were over there, weren't we? No. No? We were over there. That oh, there. Yeah, down, down there. Down. That's it. Got gotcha. Yeah. They look the same, don't they? They do. That's where we had our dinner last night. <laughs> Over there. But yeah, you can see all the work they're doing here. Quite amazing. And there's Menham Gate over there. And that's the square. And display about uh, the trench warfare. Hazards you might have faced. Poison gas, machine guns. The display said it was mainly boring. Just kept had to keep your head down. Was that the fort then? I think so. Yeah. And in the diaries, there's loads about you know the back at the canal bank. Yeah. Look at that. Huh. I'm saying here about uh, food kitchens or field kitchens rather. Uh, German called them mobile field kitchens like those in Ypres. Goulash Canon. Canonon. Trinket water had to be piped, well, was piped or they carried it in jerry cans. Or petrol cans as it was then. Yeah. Hmm. About zeppelins in here and air aerial warfare. And uh, obviously used first to uh, take aerial pictures of the lines. And some of the observers. <laughs> Tree house there. Huh. Look at that. A motorhome. <laughs> In that uh, aerial photography was probably the deadliest weapon. Uh, some aircraft were equipped with a telegraph and they could uh, ta uh, tap in the positions and increasing the accuracy of artillery. Huh. Okay, Charles Bannister. Led his men west of Bellavarda. They succeeded in taking the first German trench because the artillery had broken the wire barricade. As they advanced towards Belvedere di Gieva, there were many casualties. British artillery had not followed the infantry quick enough. Moreover, they were fired at by German artillery, which fired gas grenades. As a result, the battalion was forced to withdraw into a connecting trench. 
and he was killed in the heavy fighting, barely one week at the front. His name is on Men and Gate on panel eight. Oh. So from a tank point of view, the Third Battle of Ypres may be considered dead. From an infantry point of view, the Third Battle of Ypres may be considered comatose. It can only be continued at colossal go loss and little gain. So up there is, it mentions the Battle of Pilkham, uh, Pilkham Ridge, which is where Jenny's granddad was, trying to take Langemark. A model here. Les ouvrages, positions et défilements ennemis. Toute cette activité rendait ces secteurs particulièrement angoissants. Chacun sentait que la partie n'était pas finie, que la bataille pouvait reprendre et allait reprendre peut-être plus brutal qu'avant. Models of tanks. So the Americans joined. This was the kit they came with. There's a display here of a changing front line throughout the years. Yeah, yeah right so back to here. Just well, past Ghent then by the first of the eleventh. Yeah. yeah, there's the French equipment here. Uh, by the end of the war, they'd obviously got rid of their blue uh, uniforms. Too obvious. And the German uniform. Uh, here's the Australian kit. And the Belgian uniforms and equipment. Yeah, some of the gravestones. In the case here were mementos of the deceased. How did they deal with the loss? Hmm. <laughs> Canadians, Indians, Sikhs. The Anzacs. Oh, okay. some of the houses they, they built temporary houses after the war <laughs> there was nothing left it was there, I suppose they were, yeah. mm. but with whatever rubbish was left behind okay yeah rickety houses from war rubble soon replaced by a wooden and metal uh, emergency housing Public buildings such as schools and churches first appeared in prefab versions. A result, a wooden village appeared at the mini plime in Ypres at the edge of the town. Yeah, so there and there's your football, yeah. didn't it? The yeah. church. Yeah. I don't know how much of that you'll be able to see on camera, but obviously a bit of carving. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's how they 
Yeah, it's, all, it's, it's a wonder there were any walls left, really. Yeah. They propped it up with uh, mm. bits of wood there. Yeah, there they are. Yeah, they are rebuilding it. Yeah. Well, the banners up here are all the wars since the First World War. Somali Civil War, Albanian Revolution. Yeah, this, these banners here, all along here, are uh, mayors of various towns and villages have signed up for, as mayors of peace. <laughs> Global campaign to stop killer robots. Okay. This is a uh, display about the cemeteries, isn't it? About the Graves Commission. Rampart Cemetery, Leal Gate. some of the uh, Wargrave Commission cemeteries around Ibra and Ostend. Huh. Some of the stonemason tools. This carving rather stopped me in my tracks. Yeah. They stuck us in a trench and put a monument on top. Different crosses here. Yeah. 1272 Private J. Lynn VC DCM. Second Lancashire Fusiliers. Wolfgang Kuhn, Lieutenant Pioneer 24. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of these were sort of, you know, fashioned from whatever they could find. That's right. Yeah. There's one here that was fashioned from an aircraft propeller. Blue ones is the British one. Yeah. The green ones is the French. French, yeah. The red, the German, right? Yeah. The Belgian are, are the yellow ones, yeah. They're mainly up the top there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying all these cemeteries, all these dead here, and this is just Belgium. And the Netherlands at the top there, isn't there? But, yeah. The German cemeteries are the biggest there, and less of them, less cemeteries anyway. Mm. I, I love this. This is a Lego model of it. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Little man. <laughs> that's brilliant. Well, that's it for our little visit to the... Um, in Flanders Fields Museum. It's the second time we've been here and there's still so much to see. And uh, yeah, well worth a visit. So if you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up and why not come and visit the museum? Yeah, it's well worth it. All right, okay. we'll see you soon. Yeah. Bye then. Bye then.